Joining us now, Florida Congressman Brian Mast and Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Um, let's talk about what Joe Biden is trying to do, linking Ukraine and Israel cash. Really, the funding starts in the House. So can't the House actually pass a bill giving supplemental money to Israel and take up Ukraine a later day? Ryan, Ryan Zinke, to you first. Yeah. You know, uh, yes, we can. But I think a larger question is, what is this administration doing to funding Iran? As we've Very seen, a special question. envoy today may have moved billions of dollars uh, to Iran. We see six billion dollars. They haven't put a hold on it. So the question is also, what's this administration doing to fund Iran? Certainly, Congress, we're going to have a say. But, but look, this administration seems to be moving money around without the approval of, of, of Congress. We saw that with the six billion dollars. Mm -hmm. We've seen that with their moves before, you know, stretching and, and going around sanctions. So I think this administration's intent is moving around Congress as much as they can. To Representative Zinke's point, one of the, I think, most common sense things that we could do is take any of those assets that are frozen of Iran, whether from 1979 or whether frozen this past year, and put those in the fight against Iran and in the hands of Israel. Well, I never understood. They keep saying the the Biden company, well, we have the ability to refreeze that $6 billion. Well, if Iran cannot, doesn't have the will and the ability to actually spend it how it wants, then you wouldn't need to refreeze it, that it's essentially frozen in the first place. So which is it, you bum nuts? Um, pardon me, well, well, Congressman. You, you, you look at this and you know, people say, well, this is an intelligence failure. This is an intelligence denial. Yeah, that this administration, would, and these, these efforts, you, you look at it as coordinated. On Hamas, on, on the Gaza Strip, these are huge land sea operations, thousands of missiles, now Hezbollah. This is coordinated regionally. And I can tell you, the actor in the region that can coordinate this, and all roads lead to Iran. And yet this administration continues to waffle and fund. They said they can snap that $6 billion back. Now it's time to snap it. We're, what we're seeing, they're not snapping it back. In fact, especially envoy today, questions arise, did he skirt another s series of sanctions and, s and spend tens of billions of dollars directly to Iran? And again, to Representative Zinke's point, that whole chain, it's supply chain for their military operations. It's tunnel networks that they're funding to be built. It's financial operations where they're getting dollars, whether to Iran to manufacture something or out of Iran to support a fighter on the ground uh, for Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Aqsa, Martyrs Brigade, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, whatever tentacle uh, of Iran's puppeteering it might be working in, in the Gaza Strip against Israel. Congresswoman. Cori Bush and Rashida Tlaib, members of the far left squad, are receiving massive backlash for calling on the United States to end aid to Israel. Uh, Congressman Mask, what, I get both of you what you think about this, but the Democrats have had an anti-Semitism problem for a long time, particularly with, uh, with uh, Elon Omar. We're going to talk about Rashida Tlaib coming up later. Yeah, you look at that problem, whether Tlaib, Omar, AOC, take your pick of them. Right, we saw the video of uh, Tlaib uh, literally running away from, from acknowledging the atrocities. So when you face atrocities like that, you can acknowledge them and, and say this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. What did she do? She ran away from that. She hid from that. She denies that. And she remains silent in the face of literally children being decapitated. But, and let me let make, make it clear, the U.S. House of Representatives, the Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives stands with Israel, 100 percent. Let's talk about what's happening in the House today. There was an a internal Republican vote to see who the next speaker will be. That, sh uh, that list got a lot shorter. Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise winning the GOP nomination for the House speakership after that vote behind closed doors. Now, I believe Steve Scalise received 113 votes, but the magic number to win the speakership is going to be 217. Tell us the latest, you guys. Is, uh, is Scalise going to be able to consolidate the conference and become the next speaker, or is there going to be some consensus candidate that all of you have to look for? that we're not talking about right now. Ryan Zinke first. Well, well, I think the whole conference agrees it's unity of effort. You know, Montana, they circle the wagons and shoot out and not shoot in.
Yeah. And I, I've said it before, it's hard to move forward on agenda and govern when you have snipers inside the perimeter. So as a caucus, we have to move forward. The caucus has selected Steve Scalise. He's a new leader. Uh, we still have a handful that are, are, are saying in many cases they will vote no matter what on a no for a continuing resolution, no for a speaker. So we still have that to wrestle with, but I'm, I'm hopeful the caucus has, has spoken. The, le the next leader, presumptive leader, is Steve Scalise, and I certainly support him. And in this moment, Congress is paralyzed because of what's taking place here. There's a lot that needs to be dealt with. The clock is ticking on appropriations for the whole of government at the ending of that continuing resolution on November 17th, roughly. Uh, so there are things that have to be dealt with, and that puts a, a finer point on the caucus coming together as well under a speaker that says, this is the plan to move forward. Let's run that play and let's get it done. Well, real quick, is it still the eight members who ousted Kevin McCarthy that are now holdouts on Steve Scalise? Is it the same eight? Or the My understanding is it, uh, I, it's I, a different cross section. Yeah, it's a different cross section, but okay. uh, again, you, you have you know about 90% or 96% of the caucus you know, strongly supporting a candidate, whether it's Kevin McCarthy or in this case Steve Scalise, or, 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 it, could, or it could have been you know, Jim Jordan. As it look, everyone's got to give, give a little, but we need a speaker in the interest of the country. And the Republican caucus has spoke. That leader is Steve Calise. And look, and Jim Jordan is, 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 a, is a great guy. I love them both. So but with the, the caucus agreed with the, with the rules, it's, it's majority. Majority goes forward. Steve Scalise is our, is our presumptive next speaker. And the Republicans got to do our job and get, get behind you know, our, our guy and get on with our job as Congress, which is to do our job, appropriate, and to defend this country. Uh, you use the verb wrestle, Zinke. That might need to become literal. Just, <laughs> or, as we say in the South, wrestle. There might be some wrestling going on. Congressman well, Mastin well, Zinke. Yeah. Making the SEALs and the Rangers uh, proud. And yeah. I think the SEALs are a little tall in the Rangers, at least in this interview. Brian Mast. I tell you what, we're, bo we're both tough. We both love the country, and God bless America. We're a little younger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the younger version. <laughs> Great members of Congress. Thank you both. We appreciate it. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. I will be back on YouTube with more exclusive content, so stay tuned.